cooking the veal chops that are going to go in the pasta sauce. It's going to take about five to ten minutes. brown on first side and do another five minutes and we'll be done. These are the meatballs which I bake for about 10 minutes at 350. Just enough to get them halfway done. Veal chops are done enough to where they're halfway cooked. I'm going to sear the sausage links in the same grease and drippings as the veal chops. This won't take but a couple of minutes, I just want to get them somewhat brown. I've added the onions, carrots, celery, and garlic to the same grease and the drippings from the veal chops and the Italian sausage. So I'm just going to kind of mesh together and get the flavors going. You want to cook it just enough that the onions are getting tender and the garlic's, garlic is fragrant. You don't want to cook it too long because garlic burns extremely easy. All right, we're going to leave that alone for a little bit and give it a few minutes to just do its thing. In this next step, I've added about eight ounces of tomato paste. And this step is actually one of the most important. You want to saute the paste with the onions and garlic. Um, and that's what's really going to get the flavors infused and make sure it's a very rich sauce. You're going to saute it for about... Um, maybe a minute, just enough to get it all well mixed. And then when this is done, I'm going to add three-fourths cup of wine, red wine, and three-fourths cup of water. Um, the wine just makes it that much richer. Growing up, we used to use just water. Um, but since I've been doing it on my own, I've chosen to add the wine, and I really like the enhancement of the flavor. Okay, it's all mixed with the wine and the paste and everything has blended together. Um, the next step is I'm going to add four cans of tomato sauce. And for each can of tomato sauce, I add two cans of water. And then I just add my seasonings and the meats and we're going to let it marinate for a couple of hours. And that's it. I've added the sauce from the cans and now I have filled the cans with the first batch of water. One, two, three, and four. I've added the seasonings. Um, I add about a tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of sugar, and then I've got a handful of fresh parsley, uh, dried basil, dried oregano, pepper and a little bit of rosemary. I'm pulling out the meatballs. It's been about 10 minutes and they're just nice and bubbly. They're not crisp or brown or anything but they're just probably a little bit pink on the inside which is perfect. And I've got a nice good bit of drippings from the meat that's going to go in the sauce to add more flavor. Okay so sauce is ready. Everything's mixed in. Got a little action going on there. Starting to simmer. Uh, this is the fun part. I'm going to add the meatballs and all the drippings there. I'm going to add the Italian sausage and the veal chops. I have boiled eggs. Um, this is something that my grandmother always did at Easter. We'd dye the eggs and the next day she would throw them in the pasta sauce. I'm not going to add them till the sauce is probably halfway done though because this sauce is going to simmer for about maybe three hours and that's too long for the eggs. I'll probably put them in there during the last hour. So, anyway. And all of this meat is really what's making this Italian pasta sauce. It's what adds all the flavor. It's what makes it so rich. And it's also very typically Sicilian because they were poor and they didn't have a lot so whatever they did have went into the sauce and because my grandmother grew up 
um, basically on the prairie fields in Houston during the Great Depression. They didn't have a lot, so again, whatever they had went into the pasta sauce. Okay, the sauce has been um, simmering for about two hours, and as you can see with my finger right there, it has um, cooked down about two inches, so it's definitely getting nice and thick. And you can see how rich it is. Also, there's the eggs floating around in there, but you can see how much thicker the consistency has gotten. One more hour. By the way, this is the Inglis family pasta sauce recipe, handed down from my great-grandmother Maniscalco to my Nana Rosie, and then both of them taught my mom how to make it, and my mom taught me. All right. Uh, these are the veal chops, and you can see how much it's already just fallen clean off the bone. That's how tender it is. It's literally just peeling away without hardly touching it at all.